David Cronenberg's films immediately conjure up certain imagery. He has been called the Baron of Blood for such films as Dead Ringers, Crash, and The Fly. His latest is decidedly different. Spider is based on Patrick McGrath's novel. It stars Ray Fiennes as a recently discharged mental patient coming to terms with his childhood. And here is the trailer for Spider. Poor spider's webs. Who else makes webs? What have you done? Welcome director David Cronenberg and the stage star of the film, Rafe Fiennes, to this table. Uh, you for the first time, so I'm thrilled to have you here, Rafe. Hi again. Many visits. <laughs> Welcome to Henry. You once said something like this, I make a film to find out why you want to make yes, it. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, because the choice of the material is always very intuitive. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of journalists, and they all seem to think that you do it the way they do analyses of your career. You know, that you say, well, there's the arc that began with scanners and then comes yeah. down to here. And it's, it's nothing like that. It's all intuitive. You, you, you don't really know why you want to do it. Um, but you feel it. You feel it very strongly that you, you will be destitute if you don't do this movie. Now, why did you feel that about McGrath's novel? Well, it wasn't really the novel, because I got the script first, yeah. and I got Rafe first. I know that the, the, the script Let came... Just, go ahead. Yeah, the script came with a letter that said, Rafe Fiennes wants to do this movie. Yeah. Uh, and it was a very convincing letter from his agency. And so, <laughs> right from the beginning, that was an attraction, because I don't think I would have read the script because I didn't know the guy was coming to me from. Uh, unless it had that letter. So I was really you know, thinking... You, so you read the script because Rafe's name was attached to that's it. That's correct. Yeah, yeah and, and I didn't know Patrick's uh, writing at that time. You, you'd agree to do this not knowing who was going to direct, who was going to direct it, yeah. but with some kind of veto over who they might choose. Obviously. Well, I would, Catherine Bailey, who produced right, this film, right. who, who developed it with Patrick McGrath, who wrote right. the novel and wrote the screenplay, pr approached me while she, she produces radio plays, in fact, and she yeah. was watching me do a radio play, and she gave me the script saying, I think you would be good in this role. And read it and loved it immediately. People asked me why. I didn't know why. I just responded to it, like you, David was saying, yeah. in, in, instinctively or intuitively to this the atmosphere of the script. And there was no director attached. And well, well, what does atmosphere mean? I don't know. The mood, the, yeah. the mood, the tone, feeling, the, the yeah, feeling that right. I got from it. Very, very. Um, uh, I was going to say reduced, but spare would be the word. A spare atmosphere in it of this lone figure in this very um, empty. Uh, poor area of London. And when you heard he was going to direct it, that he was interested I, because you were in it. I instinctively felt that, that would be a wonderful choice. Um, a, 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 an, a, an appropriate, proper, interesting mix. Uh, yes, and I, well, we both Catherine and I were very excited at, at, yeah. at the, you know, when we, David came to meet us and of course, we didn't know until we met. Yeah, no, it was, the, it was. We had to face each other yeah. and <laughs> smell each other yeah, and we did, check each we other did. out. I was yeah. kind of nervous before. Yeah. I mean, oh, you were. You were. You I was kind of nervous <laughs> too. But when I saw that you were nervous, I became much less nervous. <laughs> and likewise, I quite yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. You were nervous because? No, no, I just. I mean, I get asked all the time by journalists or people, "What's David Cronenberg like? What's he like?" Exactly. Because they imagine from the films that. He's some weird, freaky guy. That's exactly where I was going. It is this notion that you have, that you are imagined to be yeah. this weird... What is the misconception Well, I think, I think, not to get too uh, high principled about it, but I think the relationship of any artist to his art is quite a complex one. So yeah. that to the extent that when Marty Scorsese met me, he confessed that he was afraid to meet me. And I said, you made taxi driver and you're afraid to meet me. Uh, so even, even the yeah. artist himself can, yeah. can confuse the work with the person. But what do you think the perception is? Oh, that, that I must be very strange and, and depressed and, and uh, deranged and perverse. Yes. And I would love to be all of those things. You know? <laughs> but? I'd, be, I'd be so much more interesting. But in fact, no. I mean, yeah. it's, it's why I'm drawn to those things and why those things come out. I don't know whether it's really a balanced thing. Often you, you, do, you do things on screen that you don't want to be in your life. That is certainly mm -hmm. true. Um, but the you other do thing... things on screen or you make movies about things that you don't want yes. to be part of your life. Yes. Right. right. So, you think? I think that would be from my layman's knowledge of Jung allowing the unconscious no. out. You know, you yes. allow these things 
Um, they um, need and the you, you bring them to consciousness, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And they often are the shadow side, the yeah. very disturbing, dangerous, difficult side you don't want to confront. But, but is acting that way for you? Um, yeah, I think it is. It can be, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay, tell me the story, David. What are we talking about in Spider? Well, we're talking about uh, a man who descends from the train and, we soon, and he looks like we saw what you saw. Trailer, right? And uh, he's obviously uh, something wrong with him because the, just the way he moves and the way he thinks and his confusion and stuff. And we, we learn that he's been released from an asylum where he was held for something we don't know, but for quite a long time. And he's released back into society. Uh, he goes to a halfway house uh, run by a Mrs. Wilkinson, who's played by Lynn Redgrave. And in that house are a lot of other sort of castaways, sort of social outcasts who, who also have been re released from various asylums, we assume. Uh, and what happens to Spider, this character, is that coming back into a London that he used to know starts to release all kinds of memories in him, which he then kind of inhabits himself physically. He's present in his own memories, trying to put together uh, that those incidents in his life that ended in his being uh, institutionalized, basically. All right, roll tape. This is the first scene in which Dennis Spider okay. checks into a Because <laughs> he's done a good reduction of his story, very like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> checks into a halfway house run by Mrs. Wilkinson, as David said, played by Lynn. Well, the novel actually is Spider's journal. Right. In fact, in the novel, Spider writes the novel. Right. And that means that he's a beautiful writer, because Patrick is, okay. and very articulate, and of course very good with words and metaphor and all of those things that language entails. Um, whereas the screenplay that Patrick presented me to was that Spider that we've just seen, inarticulate and not good with words. And, um, but there were some vestiges of the novel still left in the first draft of the screenplay. And one of the ones, and it's a classic for a novelist, is that he had some readings of his novel as voiceovers that Spider would write in his journal, uh, but we would hear him reading what he was writing, and it was from the novel. And I said, to, I said look, Patrick, you've, you've got two separate spiders here. The one you've created for the screen could not possibly... Not, not only could not articulate those thoughts, could not even speak those thoughts. So you've got to forget about the novel and let's go with this new spider that you've created so brilliantly. I mean, because you really have to do that. To, you have to betray the novel to be faithful to it. Mm -hmm. That's what I've discovered. There's, there's no dictionary for a, a translation. It doesn't, the two media are so completely different. This also almost goes back to the, what you said at the beginning, is that you, you don't know why you want to make a film until you make it. Yes, that's right. You know? That's right. And, and we... You know, Rafe, though he was involved in the project for about four or five years before I was, uh, people have asked me, did he have it all worked out in his head what Spider was going to do? And I said, no, we're, we're all waiting for <laughs> friends to play in our sandbox. You know, yeah. we need collaborators and we need to start working on a de thousands of details to sort of create everything. I always had a, uh, um, we had a reading before, uh, I'm sure you know, we, yeah. Catherine organized a reading of the play with some actors. And it was always odd that in even not, not the voiceover as well as certain dialogue, Spider was too articulate yeah, about yeah. himself. It was, yeah. And um, people have said to me, do you find it hard not having a lot of words? And somehow with this character, it seemed right. I mean, every yeah. time that I was on the verge, sometimes I was, you know, I, I knew what I was thinking when I was doing this, what people call the mumbling. And I knew what my emotions were. As soon as I was near to saying something, Unless it was going to be seriously written and thought about, I could, it felt wrong. To, it, it just, yeah. I, I can't explain it. It just felt that this, as he's repressing language himself, feels yeah. better than if he's being able to talk and be yeah, articulate. Because, uh, the language that Spider speaks in this movie is body language, basically. Mm -hmm. And so when, when Rafe started to do this mumbling, uh, which wasn't in the script, he said, my God, you know, is that all right? And I said, yeah, I think it's great, because it's not verbalization, it's, it's vocalization, mm -hmm. sort of the, the vocal version of body yeah. language, yeah. and it just adds texture to it, but it's not adding, it's not really adding words. I want to get some clips in here just to give visualization and, and, and your talent to this. Uh, this is where you are telling Terrence, who is John Neville, that he doesn't play and plan on staying at the house uh, for too long. Here it is. Three. Four? <laughs> no, really. Is this absolutely necessary? Oh, indeed it is, madam. Uh, clothes 
maketh the man. <laughs> and the less there is of the man, the more the need of the clothes. What are you thinking when you watch that? Um, I was actually watching John Neville. I was yeah. just, uh, <laughs> thinking, hey, boy, he's good. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I mean, we met on Sunshine. and um, Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm very fond of him. Wonderful yeah. man, wonderful actor. I, I hate... How did you get... Tell me how you went about figuring out how you're going to get inside the head of... Of Spider? Yeah. Mm. Um... I mean, did you talk to people? I mean, did you re read about schizophrenia? Did you go to a I did. No, a I, I felt, even though I... Well, first of all, I, we met... David came to London, we met, and I remember talking to you about researching mm -hmm. schizof... Schizo I mean, Ben Patrick wrote the novel. He, he had intended to get inside, to write the mind of a schizophrenic. Yeah. And David was always very clear that he, he didn't want to be, as it were, circumscribed by, make, by being... Th thought of as making a film about, accurately, about schizophrenia, which is complicated and big. So, and I think that was absolutely right, but I felt, as the actor, I wanted just to have some knowledge and maybe, and actually meet people who are afflicted with it. Um, and then I, I did manage, it's quite difficult, because you have to get permission yeah. from them, and if they're not able to take responsibility for their own decision, then they're very carefully protected by sure, whatever sure. institution they're in. But I was able to meet some people who agreed to meet me, knowing they were together enough for themselves to be able to know that I was an actor going to portray a schizophrenic. It was very, very moving to meet these people, and they talked very openly um, about, you know, hallucinations, delusions, what it was like. Some of them were able to have families and have jobs. I met some that were clearly more extremely afflicted, who, um, in terms of, you know, being able to speak, talk, were much more uh, inhibited. And so I didn't base Spider on any particular person, yeah. but it gave me a few pointers. And also talking to doctors and psychiatrists who work with schizophrenia, one of them did say to me, I was asking them about beh behavior, little twitches, spasms, yeah. which some of them have, and he, he said, you know, there are people who, to, to the naked eye, to, uh, could be completely normal, and they may be hearing voices or having sensations which they wouldn't reveal to you, and they'd be able to to carry on normally. Other people who are clearly to the naked eye very um, badly upset. He said to me that, he, he said, you can do, you sort of can do what you want. He said there isn't, there isn't one way uh, any schizophrenic behaves. There isn't one particular way of behaving. Um, we discussed, uh, you know, the degrees to which it could become too affected or too, too busy and I was always anxious it would get, you know, too much. I remember I was always saying to you, is that too much? Yes. Should I do more? Yes. And I needed David to be the pointer to guide me on. You didn't like A Beautiful Mind. Um, well, I don't really like to criticize other people's movies. I understand, but, but okay. But, <laughs> but it did come up because, enough. yeah, because um, uh, just because it was like the Hollywood version of schizophrenia. Yeah, okay, that's right. And, what and yeah, that's yeah. basically why. And certainly it worked for people, but. Uh, what a great version of schizophrenia! I mean, because the Nobel Prize at the he, end gives and it a he has a movie made about him that wins Oscars, and he has a relationship with a beautiful woman. This is the movie version, right. uh, and people would say, "Well, if that's schizophrenia, I want it." You know, that's, yeah, and yeah. that—that's why I think it's sort of <laughs> yes. not. Whereas I've actually talked to journalists, uh, two of them today. Actually, one said that his brother was schizophrenic, and one said that her mother was schizophrenic, and they found the movie incredibly moving, touching. And accurate, even though spider, you, spider, right. yeah, because and it, they it didn't gave them like, a sense they didn't, the, and they both uh, had disdain for a beautiful mind because they thought it was sanitized or something. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. That the the fact is that for most people it destroys your life, and and uh, and uh, it's affliction. That, you know. So you want people to come away from the film other than enjoying it as a cinematic experience. Um, well, I, see, this is the thing. When I said to Rafe, look, you can please do research because, of course, you'll find things that you can use. Sure. But I'm interested. To me, Spider is 
the human condition. I'm not, I, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm doing a clinical study of the human condition, not of a disease. Exactly, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And so I wanted to have the freedom to not worry about what the Schizophrenia Society of Canada would think, for example, even though they wrote me a nasty letter because of something they read on the internet. Of course, they hadn't seen the movie. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and yet, I think, be, for example, uh, uh, after a screening, a woman came to me and she said, how, do you, how did you know about the bathtub? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, I have one of those at home. My son, he's 23, he's six foot four, and he's a schizophrenic. And when he takes a bath, that's exactly how he lies in the bath. That's how he holds himself. That's how he mutters oh. to himself. Mm. That, that sense. Mm. And I, she said, you must have done research. And I said, it, you know, in the script it says, spider lies in the bathtub. And I said, it's, you know, it's Rafe. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's uh, my sense of, of the lighting and the camera move and the, and the music that Howard Shore composed for it, very delicate, that really takes you inside the mind without being sort of didactic about it. Let me just say one thing about it. Spider opens in New York and L.A. on February 28th and nationwide through March. Um, it's, it, it's just it's an extraordinary performance by you, as you know. Thank you. Um, and and um, you and I have to have a longer conversation. So oh, I'd love to do that. Thank you. I okay. would love to very much. Uh, much success with this. Thanks very much. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.